So we're riding on the golf cart the other day and we heard some grinding coming from the back end here. We pulled it in the garage and oil started pouring out of this piece right here. I just had time to start working on it. The plan was to jack it up and remove this rim and tire so I could get a better look, but it kind of feels like this whole thing is broken. So I am going to try to get this off and see if we can see what's going on. I'm curious if this whole thing will just pull out. Oh, and it will. I can see ball bearings in here. Here's one of the balls. It looks like the ball bearing exploded. You can see the inside portion of the ball bearing is stuck on this shaft, and then the outside uh, portion of the ball bearing is still stuck inside the transaxle. You can see that there's a split ring in there that I need to remove first, and then I'll have to figure out how to get that outside portion of the ball bearing out. If you're planning to replace the ball bearing and yours wasn't blown out, make sure you drain the oil before you get started. To get this out, we had some hooks that we stuck behind it. You can see we did mar up this edge a little bit, but I think there's enough surface contact here to hold the fluid in once the new bearing is pressed in place. This blind bearing puller set would have been ideal for this. I'll make sure there's a link to it in the description for the video. This is what the outside ring for that bearing looks like after we removed it, and now we're gonna move on to working on the shaft. I had to use a torque wrench to get the lugs off of the wheel. You can see they're corroded on the end, so I'll clean those up before I put it back on. This little end cap pops off, and then there's a cotter pin in here that holds it all together. So let me straighten that out, and then pull the pin. If I get the cotter pin out, this should just pull right off. This nut is a 15 16th, and the only socket I have deep enough is a half inch drive, and the only thing that I have that a half inch drive is this. So I'm gonna have to try this one. And of course, it takes it right off easily. So now this should slide off. I may have to hold it and tap it, but this piece slides off and then this sleeve slides off and then we can work on trying to get this inner part of the bearing off. Ideally, you would use a press to remove these parts. I tried to tap on this for a while. I got it to move about an eighth of an inch and then it just got stuck. So I decided to go another route instead. This is the inside of the bearing that was stuck on this shaft. So this is the new bearing already on here. It was on the shaft right here. I took this to my local mechanic that I use for everything and they used a press to remove this piece which was hard to get off. You should be able to remove this piece without a whole lot of effort but mine was fused to it. It just slides off from the shaft right here. This piece is loose and it slides off this way as well and then the inside part of the bearing that was stuck they used a press to also slide it off this way. Nothing goes that way. Everything slides off this direction towards where the wheel would be mounted. That brings us to where we are today. I went ahead and got the split ring back on here so that I can uh, work with it. That needs to go on before this piece does. It's really hard to get it on over the shafts. The best process for this is to press the new bearing on, put this new sleeve on, put the split ring on, and then slide this back on. And all of that should be able to be done by hand. There's a chance you'll need a press to put the new bearing on there. You could try to put this shaft in the freezer overnight, which is going to make it a little bit smaller. And then that should allow you to slide the bearing on easier if you don't have a press to do it. Or if you have a local mechanic, uh, go and ask them. They may be willing to do it for you. It took them about five or 10 minutes to do all of that process, including removing the old one for me. So now I've sprayed brake cleaner inside the hole here. I'm going to clean off the tip of this with brake cleaner just to make sure there's a, there's, just to get that little bit of dust off of it. We're gonna slide this into place and we'll get this little split ring put back in to hold everything together. And then we will assemble this side here. I'm gonna do my best to keep my hands out of the way, but I don't have a tripod short enough to shoot the correct angle here. So I'm gonna spray this down. Make sure everything's off, let it drip dry a little bit. Brake cleaner dries super fast. You can see it's already drying. I think you can catch that on camera. It just evaporates. And now I'm going to slide this in. I've already sprayed brake fluid inside the hole. Gotta get these teeth to engage so that can go in far enough because the bearing has to go in far enough for that split ring to go in as well. You need to you can tap on it to get it to go in i 
I can now see the groove where this ring goes in. You need pliers to get that in with the correct attachments for split rings. Uh, this would be easier without this piece on, so I may pull that back off. So with that out of the way, it's easier to access in here. I'm gonna put my tips through the split ring. Clamp it down all the way and try to work it back in. Try to use a screwdriver to push it in here and it snaps right into place. So that should hold everything in nice and firm. The next step is to put the nut back on and the beveled side goes in. Put that on there, this little cover goes over it and then this cotter pin goes in the hole. Got it all the way through and I'm gonna bend it around. Now this little cap goes over it, keeps all the dirt and grime out of there. And now we're ready to mount our wheel back on it. So I'm gonna get some of this mess cleaned up and we'll be ready to mount the wheel. When reinstalling the wheel, make sure you work with posts that are opposite sides from each other and then tighten them down a little bit at a time. Don't fully tighten one before you tighten the others. All right, with all that done, I can safely remove the jack stands and lower the off -turn. Now that everything's reassembled, I need to put new Friction Modified Plus shaft drive oil. This is Yama Lube Lubricant. I found it at a local ATV parts dealer. Last step is to drain the oil. I have something to catch it under here and I'm removing the oil plug. This is just a hex key or Allen wrench. I'm gonna try not to let it drop in. Let the remainder of that oil drain out. Get this off here and then we'll remove the fill plug here and this will allow it to drain a little bit faster and then we'll be able to fill it back up. Since my cart's lifted I can use a small funnel and still have room to get the quart to pour in there if I'm pouring from the high side. If your cart's not lifted you'll need to remove this pan in order to be able to get a funnel down and fill the oil from above. You should fill the oil to the bottom threads for the oil fill plug. It'll take approximately one and a half quarts, and I did have to jack up the back end of the golf cart to get it all in there. So that issue's been fixed. Now we get to move on to the next issue, which is whenever you come to a stop, your pedal goes almost all the way down, and you have that loud noise. So that means we have to replace all of the braking parts inside the transaxle. So I'll be removing the full thing, cracking it open, and replacing the brake parts. Stay tuned for that video sometime this summer. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. It'd be awesome if you'd click that logo in the bottom left hand corner to subscribe to my channel and maybe even check out one of my other videos shown on the right. As always, I hope you guys have a great day.